This morning we're going to be starting on a new series uh, and learning how to pray prosperity. But you can't pray prosperity until you understand prosperity. And prosperity touches everything in your life. We see it only usually as uh, the word that has to do with finances. But fan finances are just kind of a reflection of what's already going on in the inside of us, whether we're prospering or not in all other areas. It's kind of how that works. Uh, we steward our finances uh, according many times to how we feel. Uh, we steward our finances uh, and look at that as uh, what we believe about ourselves. So if we're not prosperous in other areas, it affects our finances. So prosperity is not all about finances, but it does affect finances. See, So Jesus came as the blessing because he had to overtake the curse. So we're just going to go back to basic gospel because that's where you find the most truth is in your basic gospel. Um, and a lot of times it's right there in front of us and we don't see it. So in basic gospel, we, we see that he came as a seed uh, to be planted on this earth. And that seed would bring forth a harvest of souls. Lesser grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it abides alone. He was that grain of wheat. He fell into the ground. That's that picture of like, I'm going to plant myself on behalf of the world. And then he turns around and asks us to do the same thing. That we would plant ourselves, and so harvest will come out of our life. We dedicate and we, we give ourselves to the Lord of the harvest. Um, when we first come to know Christ, that's really what it is. We're trying to get to know his kingdom, and we invite his kingdom to come dwell inside of us and kind of take over our heart. So that first stage of being a believer is more about like, I got to get to know you than anything. I got to get to know how this works. I got to get to know you. Um, but as you move forward in your Christian growth, uh, you should be visiting the office of the Lord of the harvest. Right? Uh, he's the Lord of the harvest. He's over this whole thing. He's the whole reason we have church to begin with. And he has under shepherds set up underneath uh, his domain and his rule. And all the different gifts support. And all the people's gifts move. And the corporate anointing should move to support where he's taking us. So basic gospel is that he's in charge and, and we're not. He gives, he delegates us authority in the areas that we're, we're over. And um, it's all to bring in the harvest. It's all to make sure that harvest is there. Well, how do we know the harvest is there? He already planted seed for it. He planted his life. And so we have every right to harvest souls. He already took care of the part of seeding, right? And he's telling us that the, the fields are white and they're ready for harvest. And he said, pray you the Lord of the harvest for souls. So you go to his office and you ask him for souls. Well, in order to operate in that, you have to understand prosperity. And what tells me that the church does not understand, and I'm not just talking about word of life, I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole, is we have changed uh, evangelism into gimmicks. We have moved it into, you know, everything from I'll give you a free coffee cup if you, if you come to our church or to, you know, that's, that's wrong, but it's like that's our mind says, this is how we're going to evangelize. We're going to use gimmicks and things and, and uh, huckster the people if we have to. Tell them how much God's so going to bless them. Don't talk anything about, thing about repentance or anything like that. Whatever way we can get them. And it's almost such a, a trickery of like, oh, now we have you. Right? And, and not, that's not how we fish. That's not how we fish. You're going to either get pulled in by the masses, by a net through evangelism, or it's one-on-one -on -one with a hook. And that hook is the need for repentance. So this goes in very much into understanding prosperity. If we don't understand prosperity, then we don't understand evangelism. Then there's no real need for missions. See, it starts to affect everything. And why prophesy into anything if we don't actually expect it's going to go forward? It will start to affect the fivefold gifts. It'll start to affect how we approach our family, our checkbook, our thinking, and we'll have the wrong imagery in, in our mind regarding it. And so it is my hope that through the word in the weeks to come, we get a different picture in our head of uh, what we can see about ourselves, or what God sees us like and what he sees our call like. We get a different picture in our head and that picture is attached to absolute prosperity. 
He is the blessing. When he planted himself, when he died on the cross, he bought the blessing for us. This is basic gospel. But I can take just that one point and say, if that's basic gospel, how many of you know that? Yes, we know that he bought the blessing. It overcame the curse. He made all things new, blah, blah, blah. Well, how much of that are we living? See, that's how it goes wrong with basic gospel. Once we know, we go, yeah, I know that's the gospel. Yes, but get it to abide in you where the picture is in you of that gospel so strong that you live it out on a daily basis um, is how we overcome the evil one and how we overcome uh, debt and how we overcome sickness and how we overcome confusion. It's how we overcome anything that, that's attached to the curse is to understand the blessing and to get the blessing concept to abide in us so that we are so sure that we speak the truth in love and we call things that are not as though they were. We're just so sure of the picture that we have inside of ourselves. That's prosperity. And then you walk in the fact that you know who you are in Christ. And who are you in Christ? Well, that picture the word showed you of yourself. The picture of what he's called you. You get that picture right inside yourself. You'll stand for something. Remember the old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Right? Um, it's so true. It's so true. It's so true. Because you can have a sort of picture of the gospel, and that's okay. As you're becoming a, a believer, you're, trying, you're starting to get different pictures of what the word says in, in your heart. And you're starting to see concepts and things like that. But when trouble comes, when curse comes, when subtraction tries to nail your family, it's the blessing that will overtake that. So it is so important that the church seeks what the blessing is, understands what the blessing is, and, and kind of the rules to how his kingdom works. Because you can, um, I hear this a lot now. Uh, you know, I talk about different things. It doesn't matter if it's the blessing or something else. I'll hear a lot of people, they'll say things like, well, I know the Bible says that. See, what I, what I feel, that'll be in the next thing. What I felt, well, what I was sensing, well, but what God downloaded to me, well, we're talking about his word, but it'll be separate from what the word just got done saying. No, but what he showed me was a whole lot different. See, and I, I have a different view. See, it all has to do with the picture you have of the gospel. And that picture we've talked about here and at TBO before is that it comes from the view of God's character, who he is, how he uh, walks things out, what he wants for you, all comes from this word. Because words frame your world. His, he is the word. And if you want to get a picture of Jesus, you got to get a picture of his word. And so faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And after you hear the word of God, then what happens in the brain is your, your ears and your eyes are connected together. All of a sudden, if you hear something long enough, whether you see it right here in front of you, you'll see it inside you. It'll frame a picture inside of you. It'll start to frame your world. And whatever that picture is, you have to choose whether or not you believe it to secure it. Right? Somebody calls you stupid that goes in, and this is a negative picture. All of a sudden, there'll be this picture, and there's a debate that goes on in your mind. Do I receive that or no? Do I receive that or no? Well, no. But if you did receive it, it would start to frame the picture. Not only here is a picture, all of a sudden it's like, let's go ahead and frame that, because we're going to hang that one up. All right? And we're going to refer to it as often as we can, because this is my picture now. Well, when you have that picture, then what will happen is... Uh, first it'll go hearing, then it'll go sight, then you will say. Out of the abundance of your heart, out of the abundance of the pictures you have in there, is what you'll speak out of. And so when we go to use our faith, faith toward the blessing, if our pictures are wrong, then when we go to speak, we're speaking of the picture that's framed in our head. And everybody's picture of the blessing is different. And God wants the church to become unified with his word. Not someone's concept, not this is what I think, or this is what he downloaded to me, or uh, this was my revelation. No, what does the word say? What does the word say about prosperity? And so we'll get that picture, and then we want to weld it in there and just say, Holy Spirit, just frame it. Frame it, hang it up right in front of my face. You know, the Jews would, would hang the, the little uh, tassel thing with the word in to keep it before their eyes and hang on our forehead. Right? Remember it. 
And it was to keep it there and to keep it there and to keep it there. Because the scripture says that uh, we will look at ourselves in a mirror and go, yeah, I see that's how I look. That's what, And walk away and totally forget what we look like. We do that. It's comparing that to, to the word. We'll look at the concept and we we'll go, oh, that's what he says about that. That is so good. Two weeks later, we don't remember what he said about that. So part of prosperity is to get the seed, who he is, of the word to stick in our soil. Get in my heart. Get in, get in my heart. Get in the soil. Get in that, oh, the ground is too hard there? Lord, break up that fallow ground. Get in my heart. Get in there. In the name of Jesus. Oh, there's something demonic blocking it? Okay, Father, in Jesus' name, I take authority over that. I want this word in my heart. I want revelation on this word. I'm going to seek on this word until it becomes such a part of me. The scripture says, if ye abide in him, right? And his word abides in you. You can approach the throne of grace and ask him for anything. That's absolute blessing. So the biggest key to praying prosperity is looking for the word. I've seen God grace new believers that don't really know the word. They just know Jesus loves me. At that moment, it's like he forgave my sins, and I guess he loves me. And they will ask him for something, and he will give it. I mean, we do that. When babies cry, you feed them. That would make sense. But at the same time, as he's maturing the saints, he wants you to carry the picture. He wants you to be a carrier of his word, his grace, and his blessing. The only way to do that is to eat the word. Get the word in there. To plant the seed, the seed has to grow. Get in my heart. Get in there. And so sometimes what we'll do, I mentioned this last night, sometimes we'll do where we, we're on this thing of a, of a chapter a day. Well, if the Lord tells you to do that, it's great. Do that. But sometimes we're reading more than we're intaking. And it's like scattering of seed. It's kind of like, well, I hope that grows and you just throw something at it. I don't know how the story of the fisherman or the story of the, the parable or whatever affects me, but I did read my chapter. It would be better for you to take one scripture and get the picture, hear it, hear it, hear it, picture, frame the picture, see the picture, say the picture, do the picture. So what's happening is um, the inability to harvest is really hung up on the fact we don't get past the seed. We get seed, and we go get more seed, and hope someone will prophesy over me, plant some seed, and, and so-and-so spoke to me and said some seed, and the word's saying some seed, and I heard some more seed, and I heard some more. Which is it that you're going to let take root? Because one seed taking root will come up and bring forth a great harvest. One seed. So sometimes it's, it's, it's better to say, hold on, I'm going to back up out of this thing. I need to understand like the blessing. So I'm going to take one, one scripture and all week, I'm going to harp on that. Because as you read it, if it's not operating in your life in a certain area, then you know just because you read it once, that's not going to cut it. It's already not operating right. So what we have to do is get the seed that's appropriate to the thing that has lack. All right? There's lack in that area. We're going to seed our way out of this. That's what we're going to do. Now, you can do that by giving when, when um, uh, the offering plate comes around. If you want prosperity to come on your life, stay faithful to tithing, stay faithful to offering, follow the Spirit, and seed. But here's the part in that. If you don't seed in faith... Not a whole lot happens. So you, how do you see it in faith if you're not sure what the word says about it? Right, well, I'm just going to copy it because Ralph did it, so I'll just throw it in there and see what happens. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. But when you get a word from God and he begins to show you seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest, it is my job to do this. Lord, you are the Lord of the harvest. What would you have me plant? Then you put something in the the plate by faith. Faith is in action, right? And then you pray, God, water that seed by the Spirit. The Word and the Spirit always go together to bring about harvest. Water that seed. And then you don't walk away. You're getting ready to harvest that thing. Whether it's two years from now, whether it's two days from now, I'm looking for the harvest. Come on now. 
Come on. God, water it. I'm going to speak it again. I'm going to speak it again. In fact, I plant this seed many different places. Sometimes he'll, he'll say, plant in this one area and believe for a harvest. Sometimes he'll say, I want you to plant that seed there and speak the word over it, and there and speak the word of it, all for the same harvest. We're just planting in different fields. Come on now, harvest, come on. We have to be able to understand it. If we don't, we're not able to get the picture, then we're not sure. And faith only operates when it's sure. If you say unto this mountain, well, you can say a lot of things, but what puts that into motion is if you're sure. That's why it says, and do not doubt in your heart. You're not standing in two places at the same time. You don't doubt in your heart. You shall have whatsoever thing you ask. So it's to come to a place where unbelief leaves us. We have to understand when it comes to prosperity, wherever there's poverty, we're in unbelief. We're in unbelief because maybe we don't know what to believe. So that's the simple heart that Proverbs talk about. Um, or we've gotten uh, the gospel and we didn't know what to do with it. We're in unbelief because we're just not sure and we're afraid. But a lot of times the thing that we're afraid of, that's the area then we, we won't go seek more word on it. We'll just avoid it and come over here to the area where we have prosperity in our life. Well, that doesn't work for me, but my goodness, this area works. I'm going to go get some more word on this area. This is the area that I really am good at. And so we'll really put into that rather than saying, I like the farming that's going on here. Thank you, God, for blessing it. But these areas right here, they're four-letter words. They're the word lack. They're the word poor. They're the word sick. This is blasphemy. This is not of you. This is not right. And so we address it as a form of deliverance that says, I like the farming that's going on in here, but God, it is God's will that I prosper in all things, in all ways, at all times. And so when we're out of balance and we've got big time prosperity going over here, and we, that's almost like saying, I only farm corn. That's all I do is farm corn. No, you're good at farming corn. But if there's areas that need to be shored up, you need, to, you need wheat to take care of that area, then you're going to have to learn how to farm wheat. And what's the word on wheat? Right? The same principles work for corn, but you got to understand that wheat crop. And we've got to be able to, to be able to pray into that. And so there's a lot of four letter words like sick, poor, lost, hurt, pain, lack, idle, dead, can't, beat. And I could go on with many four letter words. That's, those are cussing words. Next to the blessing, those are cussing words, right? You know, you're going along, you're working, and all of a sudden somebody cusses, and you're, you're not in that zone. You're, you're, you want to purify your words or whatever. All, all of a sudden, there'll just be this feeling, ooh, comes up your back. It's like, what's up? Because you feel that curse speaking. Well, any area that we've got four-letter words operating, and we brush up against the anointing of the blessing, the, the blessing goes, whoa, why are you cussing around me? Why is that picture upside down or wrong? That's the wrong picture. Don't talk that picture around me. I'm not beat. I'm not going to sit around and idle. I'm in gear. <laughs> I'm moving, right? Uh, I'm not beat, I, I, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not going to sit here sick, poor, all these other four-letter words. And so uh, this is what happens when you get in the anointing the anointing, if you allow yourself to say, God, any curse in my life, I want it gone. I invite the blessing. Well, we get excited because the blessing should look like in our little kid picture mind. The way we approach that, it'll be like, oh, here you go. Here's some roses and some money and little fluffy clouds will come your way. And you'll go, oh, see, I have the blessing. No, actually, when the blessing comes, it runs over the curse and it addresses any four-letter word. That's how that works. And it's uncomfortable. So if somebody says, I want to learn how to prosper, it's like, ooh, put your seatbelt on. Because <laughs> we're going for a ride. Because it's going to take your heart being sanctified. It's going to take that ground being plowed to get that word to stick 
and sit in there. And it's going to come up against every four-letter word and other letter words that you have spoke out your mouth before. All the pictures that are in you that are not of God's kingdom, it'll come against. And um, so this is what happens. And in the weeks to come, we'll talk about this. This is what stops the church from going or doing. Right? Where's the blessing at for those who are obedient? Obedient to what? Whatever he asked you to do. Right? Faith is sure, so it puts you in motion. So then faith has corresponding action. So when we're in faith about prosperity, then we're doing something about it. Um, so this is why Proverbs, you can go through and it talks about, you know, the lazy man won't receive anything. Who, he who has a slack hand, you know, you're just kind of dinging around. You're not going to get, get much of anything going on. There's all kinds of different things that has to do with that. Um, and it, it'll, it addresses that from that angle of just doing things like works. Well, we know according to uh, James, it says, so too, this is James chapter 2. Uh, let's see what verse we got going here. Looks like verse 17. So too, faith, if it does not have works, if it does not have works to back it up, it by itself is dead. So we put our faith out there. That's that action thing that says, I heard it. I see the picture, I frame the picture, I say the picture, I do the picture. Well, I don't know how I'm going to do the picture. He, he gave me a picture, uh, let's say, he gave me a picture of a ranch that I'm supposed to run and um, equestrian ministry that's supposed to be here for, uh, I don't know, I'm just making something up as I'm going, for um, the needy, you know. Um, and so I'm supposed to give free horseback rides and therapy and all that kind of stuff. That's what I saw. I saw that picture. No, that's a vision that you're supposed to get Rhema word around. So it's a little bit different picture. It's that download of like, this is what I'd ask you to do. Whoa, I see the picture of you're asking me to do. I have to have word and spirit to back that up. Right? So then we go to get a Rhema word. We go to get the word itself, settle that, and frame some pictures of support to that big picture that he gave us. So he gave us a vision of where we're supposed to go. But what does the word say about that vision? If we don't have the word speaking to us and framing how we're going to get there detail to detail, um, then we're just waiting for the big picture. Uh, you know, it's up to God. He showed me that. I'm just waiting on him. He showed me. And one day, one day, this is going to take place. Well, then what are we doing in the in-between? Well, I'm doing something. I'm waiting on him. That's what I'm doing. You, are you in faith regarding that big picture of that ranch? Yes. What are you doing works-wise to back that up? So you ask him, Lord of the harvest, you showed me the big picture. This is the job description you gave me. What would you have me do today? I want you to go visit so-and-so today. Well, I know, but I'm trying to get to the ranch picture. Yes, I want you to go take care of that person over there. I know, but God, I'm just here waiting on you because I know what I'm really called to do. And what he's saying is if you can't do the thing I'm asking you to do at this moment, you can't have the thing I showed you. Right? So, so here we are, and anything, a four-letter word is lack, for instance. Um, if you got that word in your life, you can look at your life and you go, there's where there's lack. I'm lacking something here. This is not right. I'm lacking emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally, uh, financially, whatever it is. I can see lack. Well, that's the area. Keep, keep harvesting and everything off the air. You're doing well. But that's the area. Then you go, show me word. Give me the word on this. Well, if there's lack, then you need prosperity scriptures. Right? Because you're wanting to bring something opposite of what's going on. You're wanting to confront lack with prosperity. So then you have to know what his will is on it. And once you hear what his will is on it, you stick to that. You stick to the will of God. Now, actually, this is what the will said. Right? Well, my, my lawyer, King Jesus, when he read the will, when he laid out the will, and it was read to me. In fact, I read, went over the will again this morning, and I read it. This is what it said. This belongs to me. 
So why do I have lack in this area? Hold on a second. It's not God's issue that I have lack. He's done all he's going to do. He did that 2,000 years ago. It's our issue. So how does this go to, to uh, prayers? When you go to pray with people, or you yourself go to pray, if you don't have prosperity built inside of you as a pitcher, you will pray out of poverty. And man, those prayers will be sincere. Especially if you're hurting because of your lack. And you're poor. And there's pity. And there's all kinds of other four-letter words that will come up. You, you will pray so sincerely. I have had people in the prayer line, and they're sick in their body, and we go to pray for them. I say, how can I help you? And what comes out their mouth is a poverty picture. They don't say, because they don't know any better, right? Because they haven't been blessed in that way yet. They haven't gotten revelation. This is why we need to be in church getting revelation. And you don't want to be somewhere that preaches poverty in any area. You want to be somewhere where the word can come alive in you. So you get the picture. You hear it. You see it. You frame it. You say it. You do it. See? And so they'll, they'll be in the prayer line, and, and they'll say something like, well, you know, the doctor said this, and so... I, I'm expected to die in the next six months. And I just don't know what to do. I, you see, now the, the talk that's coming out is poverty. It's coming out. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, do we fake that we have prosperity inside of us because now I said that we shouldn't approach it like that? If that's what's real in you, then let's do that thing that's real. Let's get it out. Let's put it under the blood of Jesus. Let's say, wow, that is poverty. I know, I know this is what's coming out me right now, but this is all I have in the inside of me. Well, then let's stop and, and find a way. I'll pray with you, but let's find a way to get some word in you that will build you up from the inside. It will give you pictures of the blessing so you can hold on to that. And then after a while, what will happen is those pictures will cause you to say something totally different. So do you avoid prayer lines then? No. You come to the prayer line and you say, would you stand with me in faith on the word I'm standing on? See, I am standing on this word right here, and God made it real to me. I just need somebody a prayer of agreement. Go ahead. See, if we don't know that, that's where Proverbs talks about, you know, then we're simple in that area. We need teaching in that area. And this is why teaching in the church is very important and it has to be word-based. It can't be, here's my opinion. And one time he downloaded to me and I'm a spiritual person. You know, I can hear from him. Yeah, but what does the word say? No, this is what I felt he told me. We're getting a lot of that. Yeah. I really don't care what he told you. If it doesn't line up with the word, it ain't God. Yeah. And how do we, as we're praying for people or even ourselves, know what it lines up with if we don't know the word on prosperity. We don't know the word on blessing. So this morning, um, we're going to put some, some uh, faith out there that he's going to culture this in us. He's going to culture this in our heart. He's going to cause us to come up to a place that the seed of his word will stick. How many of you here have had the issue where you've had lack in a certain area, and I, I could bet everyone would raise their hand on this if we're honest. If you have lack in a certain area and you read a, a couple of scriptures that are completely opposite of how the picture you have of yourself. If you think you're ugly, stupid, or whatever, all of a sudden you read it, it's completely opposite. There's this thing that just goes, huh, huh, I don't know. It, it, like you can feel that it, it doesn't stick. And then you go, well, I guess that's, I heard so-and-so that worked for them. And you start kind of groping at the word, you know. Uh, some things, some ground is not well adaptable soil, like the, the word says. Wherever there's been bad pictures regarding yourself or lack pictures, that soil is hard and it's dry. So what we do is we just go, hmm, I got to get this settled. I got to get some rain in my life. I got to get the rain of the spirit and we call for the rain. God, rain on me, open this up. Let your anointing soften this area so this word will get in this soil and stick. And then how you know um, you go through the phases of it sticking is to begin with, you contemplate it like, oh, there's a concept. I don't know. You know, maybe that would work for me. I heard it worked for so-and-so. And then you read it again. You start to research, and it's like, there could be something to this. 
Well, as you're realizing there's something to this, there's more of an argument in your head. So then the first prayers we pray is to address the arguments. Get the heart softened and address the arguments. So let's stand this morning because that's where we're going to agree in prayer on. Because we don't want to try to operate in prayers we're not ready for in our heart. Now, some of you may have really cultured this when it comes to finances or health. It seems like we'll pick certain areas of prosperity, and then those are those areas that we're good at. But if you can see it for finances, let that spread over to healing. If you can see it for healing, let that same concept spread over. But the argument in our head is what we deal with the most. This year, he's going to show us how to prosper in all things, in all ways, at all times. And may you be in health even as your soul prospers. Yeah, how do in we... the, the concept of our mind or our training will argue with the revelation that comes. That's the first thing that happens. When God gives us some revelation, an argument goes off in our head. And because we believe the sky was red and now all of a sudden somebody's saying it's blue and they might be right, but it's like, well, we never believed that. So there, there's a... When, when Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free, there's a process there. When someone speaks truth to you, it challenges the lie, which means now you have to stop and think, which one am I going to believe? That will divide out in us what we're believing wrong, what Scripture says we should believe right. There is the battleground. If we don't switch over to the truth and just hang on to the lie, we will never get set free. We have to switch from the lie to the truth, and then that truth will set us free. You can't just, well, I read a scripture, so now I'm free. No, you're not. Now the battle first starts. Because you've got to now believe that before it's going to do anything in you. And that's the argument that... <clears throat> Excuse me. That's the argument that takes place that Mary's talking about. <clears throat> it's a rare person. It's a rare, in, it's a rare time in my life where God drums something new into my heart that I don't have to battle with my habits, that I've lived like this for 20 years, and all of a, God, all of a sudden God says, let's do it this way. Oh, okay, and I never have to readdress them habits at all. It's just like I automatically go do it that way. No, I don't. You know, it'll go two days into it, and all of a sudden God will say, what are you doing? And I'm going, that's right. He told me to do it this way, and I'm just doing it the same old way I've always done it. So there's a process. This is the scripture, and we're going to pray. I want to pray this, and then I'll give it back to you. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. <clears throat> For though we walk or live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to flesh using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical. They're not weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God to overthrow and destruction of strongholds. See, what she was talking about this morning, he describes as a stronghold in our mind or in our emotions. Inasmuch as we refute arguments, theories, reasonings, and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God... Now get that. When that argument is going on inside of us, like, well, but does, does God want us really healed? I mean, totally healed? I mean, it, it, that argument comes out of pride, according to Paul. Listen to it again. We refute arguments, theories, reasonings, and every proud and lofty thing. So he's saying arguments, theories, and reasonings that set itself up against the true knowledge of God are proud and lofty things. It's got its roots in pride. So, like she was saying before, uh, the same principles apply. Just try this. If you've been trained in financial poverty, this will just, this will just put you in a, in a frenzy. You know how we believe that you speak, if you're, if you're going for physical healing, you speak to your body. You speak to the situation. Body, in Jesus' name, you are whole. 
I had hands laid on me. I'm in agreement. Here's the scriptures that I've got. We say the scriptures. So in the name of Jesus, liver, you will work. You're going to come back into wholeness. You're made brand, you know, and we teach that and everybody goes, yes, amen. Okay, so now that principle is a faith principle. It works for everything. So when God says, I want you to plant $500 in the Red Lake Project because I want, your, I want you to prosper in a certain area. So now here's what will really test if we, if we have a poverty mindset or not. In the name of Jesus, money, you will come to me because I have obeyed and I will receive money in this area. I'll get $10,000, I'll get $20,000, so come to me. In the name of Jesus, I'm commanding money, you obey me. Whatever source it has to come from, through the business, through whatever, in Jesus' name, we will prosper, and, and I will financially become more rich because God said, do, can you feel the feeling in the room already changing? Why do we feel it's humble to be poor, but it's rich to be healthy physically. If, if poorness is godliness, then sickness is godliness. Yeah. They all go together. Why can't we take the principles for body in the name of Jesus, you respond to the word of God and be whole. Why can't we take those same principles and say finances, checkbook, in the name of Jesus, you respond to what God told me to do and to what I did in planting seed in the name of Jesus, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, come to me now. I am calling you. Oh, oh it's just, it's, you can just feel the argument go off in people's head. Well, you can't do that. That's pride. You can't, I mean, you can't be bossing God around in the area of money, blah, 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 blah. but yet we'll use the same principle in physical healing. Do you know what is arguing? Listen to the scripture. Refute the arguments, the theories, and the reasonings, and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. That argument of, well, you, you can't do that with money, that's wrong, that just feels wrong, that is rooted in pride hard to see it but it's rooted in pride so read on verse 5 and we lead every thought <clears throat> and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah the anointed one being in readiness to punish every insubordinate for his disobedience when your own submission and obedience as a church are fully secured and complete. Now he's applying this to a church setting. Let's apply this. That he's saying in a church, we need to deal with the, the arguments and the theories and the reasonings, the lofty things, the proud things that are setting up against the knowledge of God. And of course, that's a whole message in itself. But when you take that and apply that to yourself, and that argument goes off in your head that says, well, money doesn't really mean anything anyway because I just serve God because I love him. That's pride speaking. If money didn't mean anything, why does God want to get it to you? It's not for you. It's for the kingdom. It's to get things accomplished. So you have to be ready to punish that thought. And bring it into submission and obedience. So when we step into prosperity in any realm, I mean, for, for us, I mean, we harp on healing. So it's probably easier for us. But I could tell you to go to 10 churches that surround us here that don't believe in healing. And, and well, if God does it, it's okay. But, I mean, it's not like it's ours. You can't really believe for it. And you tell those people. Now, you really need to start speaking to your body, and you need to really take the scripture and take hold of this. Arguments will go off in them, and theories and reasonings where you are wrong. See, healing's not for today. It passed away, and that's all based in pride, the whole thing. So no matter what area of prosperity we want to start into, it starts with addressing the arguments and reasonings inside of us, which are rooted in pride, 
And if they persist, we have to punish that disobedient thought. That dis that, that's a whole different thought, but I want it planted here. We have to punish that part of us that is not willing to submit to the word and say, you're going to stop it. This continual frustrating argument I get in my head whenever God says, here, go do this. And a thousand thoughts go, well, I can't do that because I'm going to get hurt. And this person's going to say that. And then people are going to look at me. And that's, that's all based in pride. And you know what? You are going to stop this. Or we'll never prosper. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this. I'm excited because the shackles of poverty are going to fall off this place. Amen. 